Hi, I'm Greg LeBlanc, and I'm here at the Haas School of Business with Andreas Gear, who is a sustainability program manager at Google and also a graduate of Berkeley's College of Environmental Design. Welcome, Andreas. Thanks for having me. It's always good to be close to Worcester Hall. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Andreas, um, as a sustainability manager, um, you're concerned with a lot of different things. I mean, sustainability has a lot of different uh, meanings to a lot of different people. Uh, you've talked about um, user-focused design in the physical environment. What does that mean to you? What does that mean to Google? Yeah, well, so when we're talking about a real estate workplace services program and sustainability, it's, it incorporates energy, water, and waste. We're thinking about uh, all the different materials that are coming into our buildings. Um, but really, when we think about how our facilities are impacting our business, it comes to how our facilities are impacting mm -hmm. our users, our employees in the space. Um, and so we're thinking really, really in a detailed fashion around what impacts a human being when you're in a physical environment that we've created. And that goes to our inherent attraction to nature that reflects uh, natural daylight and, and the electric lighting systems that we use. We're thinking about acoustics and thermal comfort, just making sure that whatever we do in our spaces is thoughtful um, and is really set up to maximize both someone's enjoyment of the space, but also their productivity when they're in the office. And so how do you track that? I mean, is it about subjective surveys, uh, user um, self-report data, or do you have some way of objectively measuring the user satisfaction or the, the productivity? It's a great question. I mean, we get feedback a lot of different ways at Google. Um, one of them is with a, a system that basically tracks complaints, right? So we're definitely able to kind of understand where there are spaces that are not working because we're getting a high level of complaints. Um, we also do have, uh, we, we used to have kind of a global survey, but we've now started to kind of bring that survey to a more dedicated, focused uh, application where when we go into a new project, we're really trying to understand what people appreciate about it and what people have concerns about in terms of physical space. Um, I'd say from a data and analytics standpoint, we're also just looking out to the market to see what kinds of scientific research and, and work being done outside of the walls of Google can help inform our design and, and reflect some of the principles that we have around user focus, health, sustainability. And is there some level at which you have to think about personalization or, or customization, or are there kind of um, general principles that apply to all employees regardless of their job function? I mean, I think it's a little bit of both, right? Uh, there are certain things that just we as humans are going to be attracted toward, probably regardless of whether you're an engineer or a salesperson. Um, but then there are other things that are, are probably a little more specialized. Um, and, and definitely creating a flexible work environment where people can sort of gravitate towards their individual preferences mm -hmm. goes a long way. Um, we've done some studies with flexibility where we're hoping people would move around during the day or move around based on different functions throughout their day. And, and I think that normally what we would actually find is that people will set up their workspace one time that they feel like kind of maximizes it for their own usage and then leave it there. Now, you've talked also about the circular economy and how important that is to, to Google. Um, in terms of attracting and retaining employees, uh, does, does, is this the kind of thing that, that um, attracts workers? Are they, are they interested in kind of the impact of the environment, not just on themselves, but also on, on the, the general public and the broader world? We definitely like to think so. I mean, I think uh, being on a team focused around sustainability, that Googlers have a pretty incredible uh, tune towards what their building's impact is on the environment around them and on themselves in terms of their indoor air quality and health. Circular economy is a little bit newer. It's, I think it's like newer to the field of sustainability in the built environment. Um, so I'm not sure that that we've been able to kind of show the impact as far as circular economy to date. Mm -hmm. um, but, but really what we're trying to say when we talk about circular economy is that the materials that are coming into our buildings are going to be going back into a material production stream. They won't be just being put in the landfill or even be recycled to a lesser usage, but that we'll be able to kind of take some of the raw materials out of our buildings and reuse them as products mm -hmm. elsewhere. Um, and so, you know, we're working with different manufacturers to try to understand how that might uh, show up in our offices. Um, but I don't know that we're really at the point that uh, we've been able to kind of message that to employees in any way. But, but I think, you know, when you want to do something like that, it's important for you to 
access that information, but that information is not in any kind of organized or, or central uh, database. And since Google's mission is to organize all of the information of the world, how have you helped to organize information around uh, the ingredients that appear in these, these products that you consume? It's, it's a great point. And, and that's actually one of, I think, the key passions of our team and Google as a company is around material health um, and really understanding how a building product might impact the indoor air quality of, of, a, of a building. Um, so mo for the most part, we've partnered with some really interesting third party groups and nonprofit organizations like Healthy Building Network um, that are running programs that basically allow for building manufacturers, uh, people who actually create products to disclose what is in that product. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, to date, you can, you know, you can look on the back of a candy bar and actually know what the ingredients are. Even if you can't pronounce all of them or you don't know what they all mean, you have access to that information. And when it comes to building products, there's actually a, been a bit of a lack of transparency to date. And so, you know, with the health product declaration, with third party certifications like Cradle to Cradle or Declare, um, the building industry is actually moving towards transparency in a way that can have a really big impact um, on the industry as a whole and on the people who inhabit our buildings. Okay, well, sounds like interesting stuff that you're doing at yeah. Google. So thanks for coming in. Yeah, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm.